can we start with some introductions of yourself day to day? What's what, what's your role at uh, Wombat and what, uh, as a high level, what is actually Wombat Exchange in itself? Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me, Grant. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. So I started out as a as a quant trader, and you know, like I always was always interested in crypto and that kind of stuff because you know, you know, it was just kind of natural. You know, having kind of like that. Bitcoin, you know, obviously when Bitcoin first came out you know you had like decentralized money and like money of the future and that was like, the coolest thing you hear like funny stories of how like you know people traded it for like like thousands of bitcoins or like pizza and you just you just like laugh that off at it after like you know like in current the current day right so you know back then i was always interested in it and obviously like, ethereum came out and all that kind of stuff and then while i was um you know quant trading art i was really bored with it and after that, you know, I became, I, w- I was like, what else can I do with, you know, coding back then? I was like, mm, yeah. software engineer. Uh, and then after that, so I discovered like, and I, you know, I love crypto. So I was like, okay, let's do some blockchain stuff. So I went to a couple of companies, did some blockchain, Dex work, centralized exchange, all that kind of stuff, stable coins, um, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I got another opportunity to do, um, go to this, uh, this family office to manage like a hundred million dollars worth of crypto. Nice. And then I was like, and I was like, hmm this is still not that fun. And like, after that, like, uh, I just thought, you know, let's, let's build something. And then obviously then did, we did more research. I had an algorithm, but it wasn't complete. Um, after that, you know, we, um, we sent it to Binance and incubation labs. And the awesome part of it, about that was, you know, we went in with like, like I tell people, we went in with an Excel document <laughs> and, you know, they accepted us. And that was a crazy, literally the craziest thing. Um, I don't know if they'll do that anymore, but like back then, like we had this uh, this idea. And then I just sent it. Uh, I think the team at Binance Labs, they liked it. And then they sent it to CZ, they liked it. And then that's how we got in. Um, after that, you know, we went through the whole process. Like got got to talk to a lot of great people like Yatsu, um, um, a bunch of guys with Polygon. Uh, and then obviously CZ, Hui, and that kind of stuff. And after that, like after we finished, uh, we had a lot of interest from investors, like uh, obviously Animoca, uh, Jump, and all those these kind of hailstones, Shima. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, like we got like introduced into Binance MVB, uh, and then we became, you know, obviously Project June, June 2022, Project Star, D5 Stars, whatever. So basically, what Wombat is, we are a stable swap. So uh, I mean. To the ex- to the world, you might think like a stable swap is kind of like a really boring kind of like a project, but it's actually it's actually fundamentally important to you know the the DeFi kind of thing. You know, you can actually continually have like like people can uh, are competitors. Uh, they can actually keep lowering like swap rates and that kind of stuff, but it, it, it's at a cost to them, right? So, but Wamba actually why we're so powerful is because our swap is genuinely the most capital efficient out there. We're not, we're, you know, we're not at like um, the mercy of like low swap issue. We're not competing because once a lot of these exchanges, they, they keep dropping their fees to like, like almost zero, they, they run into issues of sustainability and that kind of stuff. And this is really what um, Curve and Uniswap kind of like, we're kind of, are kind of fighting with right now. So obviously we know that Curve is at uh, four basis points, uh, 0.04%. Uh, Uniswap is at 0.01, I believe. And you notice that like there's a weird, weird kind of like dilemma going on right now where people are actually still i believe putting more money in curve because they're still getting a bit more swap fees but obviously there's that the whole dynamic is more complicated than that but wombats you know our, our thing is that we have we basically changed the design of what um what pools should be like like you know when you go to a bank um you would never act be asked to put like you know like uh pounds in like different te- separate pools right that's the same thing how i envision crypto should be like you know a, a new user should not be going to a pool and you know having to choose like you know 10 different pools of like usdc or busd and be like oh so which one do i put into so it doesn't make any sense you know from like a like, real life kind of thing like web 2 kind of mentality right oh absolutely like you try you try to explain to someone when they're first trying to deploy liquidity on i don't know a uni v3 fork or a sushi fork and it's like so i have to do what what, what do i have to do it's like the barrier to entry is just like so high it's uh i mean it's, it might be okay for us to do it all day every day right but then when you get to like people who are just wanting to park some stable somewhere got them on chain sat doing nothing um that whole adding liquidity thing although as i say if you're doing it every other day it's, it's, like, it's a very easy task to do but you try yeah. and get 
if you're trying to actually scale this thing to like the next, I don't know, 100 million users, whatever, it's not it's not going to happen in the current state that it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, I mean, even if, if you tell like the most like like seasoned crypto users to look at like Curve or Ellipsis, they're like, "Wow, this is, there are so many pools. Like, why does it have to be so complicated?" And like you mentioned, like you know, DeFi like crypto adoption in general really it's um it's very nascent. It's very like the initiative is very nascent. Like um you know a lot of people hate on GameFi, but you know GameFi really helps stimulate and improve you know people's adoption for crypto, right? Like like the, right now adoption is one of the most important things. So basically, Wombat as a stable swap, we uh, our algorithm is because we're I think I, I genuinely believe not because we made it, but it is the best solution uh, algorithmically for stable swaps because. It's efficient. Our algorithm is more efficient. Um, it's speedy, and it just makes a lot of more sense in terms of you know real life kind of usage. So, so why is uh, a stable swap is why is it important? Um, so we saw uh, you know how Curve uh, became such a behemoth, some this mad, gigantic kind of entity in Ethereum, and it's not by by fault. So obviously, Curve came after Uniswap because they realized like you know pegged assets really behaved a lot differently. So obviously, so why is, you know, why did Curve become so successful? Like, so one of it became successful because people realized, you know, like stable coins is really the backbone of crypto. I mean, I mean, we all have, we have a lot of bridges right now. We have a lot of um, different protocols doing like called cross-chain, multi-chain swaps. But the reality is, like, you know, bridges and stuff is really made for stable coins. Why? Because, you know, there's no utility in bridging Ethereum over to BNB chain. There's no there's no utility bridging BNB uh, token to you know Solana or something, right? But there is you very much like a huge utility when you bring stable coins over to different chains because you can buy stuff. So you know, the question is like, why is Wombat important? Why is Wombat like, the the rise of Wombat? It's like one, like I mentioned, um, you know, having a very easy user interface for people to pick up. I mean, if you have stable coins, you can buy anything in crypto, um, and no, that, that's the first thing is the adoption. The second thing is um, we have, you know, like all these projects building on top of Wombat. And why is it important? You can look at Curve. Curve is very powerful because there's so many things building on top of it, you know, making it better, helping with yield, helping with, you know, boring lending, all that kind of stuff. It's it's really, you know, the full spectrum of DeFi, of like of decentralized finance, permissionless finance. But you'll, you'll ask, like, why is it important? Um, it's important because you know the risk appetite for people in general is it's it's really not that high i mean you, everyone in crypto really you know we're, we're all degens i mean to a certain extent but you know the majority of people in this world they want like stable yields they want like you know as much delta neutral risk-free investments as possible and that's why they like stable swaps you know they even though um it's boring it's a fundamentally stable kind of like like fundamental part of you know crypto so Wombat, obviously, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's basically what Wombat is. And then um, we have a very efficient algorithm; it's easy to use, and basically, you know, we have a good foundation for people to build stuff on. So that's okay. that's what Wombat is. <laughs> Lovely. Well, I know all about it because I've just been doing the editing for the article we're about to release on Wombat. Wombat, but uh, for those for those that don't know, so so what would like the basic user? kind of flow look like you come to wombat with some stables what what's what's next like where, where would you go what would you do um well obviously the best thing to do is like swapping stable so um one of the things like people ask you, like why do you need wombat because when you stop when you swap like hundred dollars usdt there's no reason why you should get anything less than almost like what you what you put in right so at, at that that that's the main reason the other thing is obviously there's uh wombat the wombat token uh, staking obviously there's um uh, liquidity mining, all that kind of stuff you can do. Like if you just stake your stables in, you get like X amount of APY and that's like really good for uh, yields. And obviously that's what everyone's chasing for. But, you know, the biggest thing about Wombat is, you know, we are building, you know, a huge kind of ecosystem. Um, like I mentioned, there's going to be tons of like, a, currently there's already nine projects building on top of Wombat. So he's, Damn. yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I kind of thought this, you know, when I, I was, I was, I was going through just doing the proof check, doing doing some editing uh, on the article, and I was like, "Hmm, I've kind of kind of seen like the history of this play out, and I kind of fore- foresee how this will happen with Wombat as well. Obviously, with like you, you guys will have like a, a VE one model as well, which people will be looking to accrue. But 
that's all well and good for users, but it's when protocols start building on top of you guys and they've got a huge incentive to then go and scoop up as much of, of your governance power and their kind of the token itself to actually boost their yields on top of that platform. So you see, obviously, the most obvious one to point out there would be akin to something like a convex on curve, or we've seen that play out with vector finance and, and platypus and things like that. And then you start to see other kind of avenues for protocols to actually build on top. And then what you've seen now with Curve is, I think it's been like the, the first real protocol, probably you could argue Uniswap has as well, but it's like a, an application that has its own ecosystem in, 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 a, in and of itself. So there's like all these people scrambling around, obviously the Curve Wars. And I can definitely foresee that happening. Um, is there anything you can kind of... Well, obviously, there's certain stuff that you can't give away, but as you said, there was nine protocols building on top. Will there be something akin to what we've seen previously? Uh, yeah. So, actually, there's a, I think there's one or two convex forks. Um, there's a born lending. Um, there's two uh, stablecoin-ish kind of projects. Um, there's a insurance protocol. Uh, there's trading. There's another, like, a yield aggregating kind of, like, a voting. Um, there's a Vodium kind of thing. Yeah, so it's it's like super exciting. Oh, there's some, there's a there's a there's a team that's doing like fractionalized NFT kind of like trading. Um, one's doing leverage trading too. It's it's exciting, man. I think you know, um, like we I was talking to them and they're like, I was like, oh well, Wombats, you know, just starting out as you know, like it's like a baby project. Like, why are you guys? And they were like, well, and like the first thing, like, well, you guys are legit. You guys actually know you know, the math behind it and not just like fucking saying, I was like, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> and then the other thing is just like, yeah. And then the other thing was just like, um, you know, these guys, obviously they've all built stuff on other protocols, you know, the, these guys, but they realized that, you know, one path to design, this makes sense. It's simple. And I think simplicity is sometimes, you know, the most beautiful thing because, you know, when you complicate things a lot, it's, it's, you know, it's just not cool in my opinion. So, you know, yeah. one bad, you know, our goal is to be the most simple, easy to use kind of thing, not only for users, but in these projects as well. Right. So that, that's the thing. So hopefully I can't, I can't release the names of these projects, but uh, you know, they, they, are, they will, they will be introduced very soon. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, initially on BSA, if I'm not mistaken, um, w one question would be, w was it just the Binance connections that immediately thought, let's get over there. Um, and then would there be any kind of, Obviously, we, just, we talked upon stable swaps being um, a perfect kind of piece of infrastructure for cross chain. But uh, so initially on BSC, why, why BSC from the get go? And then, do we have any kind of multi chain ambitions going down further down the line? That's a that's a great question, man. Um, so one of the things like I, we need to uh, realize, like, you know, it's the success of a blockchain, you know, has like a multitude of factors, right? So like we, you know, you know, as you know, you've been in crypto for a while. Um, you've seen tons of L1s come and go. And I think with that, you know, everyone, every year you see two and three, two to three, or even more like 10, 20, you know, plus L1s that go like, hey, we are, we're the newest tech. We have, you know, uh, the different narrative. Like, oh, we have like the best language. Now. You know, we wrote a new branding language. I'm like, what the, what the F do you really need that many? <laughs> or like, I think like, there's two, co two coming onto the market at the minute that are going, going for that narrative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you know, like one of the things is like, you, like when you build something like, uh, like we, ha we, so it's a, a, a kind of like a side, a sidetrack a little bit. So there's a couple of these projects that build on top. They, they were building on Luna before. And they're like, yeah, well, we thought they were going to be really big, but they just died. And then, you know, that obviously the whole universe have happened. So it really puts in perspective, right? So it's like, well, what do you want to build? What do you want to build on? Because obviously, if you build on a chain that dies, it's not going to last a long time. I mean, you're all your hard work. I mean, you can pour it over, but then you're literally still restarting with a new community base, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so BNB chain, like obviously we are a Binance incubation, like incubation project. They were actually the first one to actually give it a chance because, you know, some like some like some some guy was just an algorithm on an Excel, just like literally went up to Binance Labs and be like, you know, I told him like we have this is the most probably most innovative algorithm, and I was like, yeah, and they're like everyone else thought I was crazy, and Binance was obviously <laughs> give us a chance. So, um, yeah, thanks Binance Labs team, I love you guys. <laughs> so, don't, okay, so don't you think that's yeah. one of the best the best things about this space though like what we work a lot with kind of bridging traditional companies who are trying to dip their feet into like the whole web3 crypto space and they're just like one thing that they they really they get immediately or they just they can't get their head around it is 
just how kind of laid back and relaxed everything is. But but it's yeah. it's a better yeah, yeah. it's a better environment to to build in like one hundred percent. Like if they leave it if they leave in like a traditional traditional role that's been really like by the book and regimented, and then come over to this space, I think they get a real shock and some people take to it or uh, like they really really hate it immediately. But I I, I personally absolutely love that thing more than love, anything yeah. I think in this space. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like to be honest, like I, before I went to Binance, went to a couple of other like ECs and like they they really they were like, Alex, we only invest in forks because that they're proven. I'm like, yours is too innovative. I'm like, what the? F-? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. So yeah. So back to the whole BNC, why BNB chain or BSC? Um, so. We chose it because the longevity, man. Um, mm. I think the success of of any chain is really dependent on the community. Like BNB chain has a huge community already. Of course, you have tons of users. But I think like the leadership is one of the main things, right? So, um, you know, they have CZ is a great leader. Um, you know, he's always defending um, uh, a lot of like, you know, the crypto native kind of people. Um and, you know, BNB chain, in reality, it's it's like a huge anomaly in this world because, you know, what other chain has, you know, a huge, the world's largest centralized exchange attached to it, that flow is just like, it's like, it's unparalleled compared. So that, that's one of the things. So, um, and, you know, being on a stable chain that you can actually endure through, like, kind of the, the tough times is really important. Um, and good leadership, I think that's one of the, the, the pillars that for success. And in terms of multi-chain, um, I'm, I'm a very, uh, I don't really, I'm a bit of a trailblazer. I don't really agree with how like Curve and all these kind of uh, platforms do uh, multi-chain. So I yeah. think that's still capital inefficient because right? Wombat's idea is like, you know, you don't have, you don't, you no longer have like USDT, USDC, like meta pools and USDT, BUSD kind of pools. We have one pool, right? So in, in like, in respect to that kind of like, that kind of like ethos, that kind of like that I mentality is, I think having separate deployments is really silly, silly because, you know, you're still being capital inefficient. You know, if you're like, for example, curves, um, their, their stable swap on avalanche obviously has separate liquidity than Ethereum, which is, I think that's kind of silly. So Wombats obviously will follow kind of the same ethos as having like one gigantic pool, uh, but we're still going to be based on BNB chain. Because you know gas is gas fees are cheap, um, and in general, I just think having a kind of robust ecosystem. And when I've been robust, it's community, the leadership, the tech, and then just everything. So, uh, multi chain is coming probably end of the year, and I think at the same time we'll attack multiple chains at once because we're a partner of Wormhole. Um, exactly. So yeah, so it's, yeah, stay 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 tuned with that. I suppose you guys get a tap into that BUSD liquidity as well, where it's not exactly as abundant on the likes of BUSD is not exactly abundant on the yeah, L2s or Avalanche or anything like that, is it? So you get to tap into that market. Yeah. Yeah. So that's huge. That's huge. Um, and honestly, man, stable coins is something like you want something, a big, a big company behind you. Honestly, man, it's, it's something having something when like a company like Binance backing is it's mega, mega important. Well, I think, I think they've like, this might be a little bit of a tangent, but I think they've effectively their stance on whatever whatever they have, whatever they have is coming out of like the USDC and USDT camps at the minute with the blacklisting thing. BUSD just is just costed by increased in uh, increased in activity, increased in use, and stuff like that. So I know that might be a conversation for another day, but I kind of respect their stance on uh, not overreaching, given over the past couple of weeks' events and stuff like that. So I think that's yeah, a big I- plus as well. Exactly. That comes back to the leadership thing, doesn't it? Exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I think um, you know, like people, people like hate on like uh, BNB chain a lot because they're all, oh, there's not as many nodes and that kind of stuff. But like, I mean, like, dude, back then Polygon had like how many nodes? All these kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> it, 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 dude, like why? Why do you like? You know, like the whole like crypto kind of like trilemma where you have like scalability, decentralization, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I think um, they're right, but you know, you know, there's always trade offs, and then. But you know, I think Binance is in a very good position. Um, there's there's obviously tons of haters because they're like you know they're the biggest thing in, in crypto. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, they, they know you know like they they've been very like outspoken about like defending and that kind of ethos, the crypto ethos, right? So it's like keep building, and I think I respect that a lot. I think um, you know as builders, um, you know builders are the most important thing. Um, and I think if they keep pushing, 
um, innovation. I think that's important. I mean, obviously, Binance is cool because they don't just invest in the BNB chain project, project right? They invested in Aptos, yeah. I believe, recently. So, you know, they are pushing. They are pushing. So I respect that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Can we get into Can we get into one a little bit? Can we just see how like the token dynamics work on the platform? Like, I, I have I have a kind of a, a good understanding. I've worked close with the the Vec team on over at Avalanche as well, and obviously had to cover the curve and convex thing quite in in depth. Yeah. But yeah. How, how do how do users how do users get the most out of the platform, and how does one kind of play its part in that? Yeah, so like I'll I'll probably go a bit since you know a bit of. Um... Uh, about platypus and also like curve and that kind of stuff. But I guess for the users, um, I personally don't really agree with both of their designs um, because you know, as you know, platypus uh, the, you accrue their VWAM token or VPDP, sorry, uh, through uh, you know staking staking your platypus tokens, correct? So one of the things with that design is that when you stake it, uh, you keep accruing it, but when you unstake it, you basically lose it all. So in that kind of like dynamic, you're like you're like so, so yeah, it, it's it's great for the protocol because it's it's very like, I would say it's a, a bit toxic because you're kind of forced to um, stake it and and that's not and not you can't take out take it out because if you stake it out, basically you lose all your VPDP, right? But to me, that's that's kind of like toxic in the sense that like you don't give people a choice. Uh, the flip side of that is basically when you when you unstake PTP, there's no use for it, and you gotta like stake it. So it gives the, the user a dilemma, like, oh, do I really want to stake it again? It, you know that that weird dilemma is like, how much do I stake it for? Do I have to put it in an account a long time? So or I don't really like to keep, that. Or do you have to keep topping it up to yeah outrun outrun the downside of token appreciation? And stuff like exactly, that. exactly. And then and then you have the curve model, which is obviously you. Uh, before uh, you can only stake like one, two, three, four years, or, or but now I think they load it to seven days. But there's another issue with that. So like you're you're kind of forced. Like say, what if one day you want to, um, you know, I, I don't want to stake that long, uh, but in Curve they can only, you can only extend, I believe. So if you stake it, I guess for like one year, the only thing you can do is you know you extend it to four years. So you don't really get a get a choice. And to me, uh, in my opinion, choice is the single most viable thing uh, anybody can have. Um, like I mentioned a lot of times, a lot of people like DeFi changed my life. Like I didn't grow up with like a lot of money, but, you know, DeFi really, like in general, it, it made me like, you know, like more a, a happier, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I, I think having a choice is important. So Wombat, the difference for Wombat is basically you can stake it for seven days, the maximum four years. So people get a choice. And it's not just a length of choice. You, you can actually, we have like multiple slots. So maybe you want to stake only like 10% uh, for like a year. Uh, and the rest you want to do for seven days. You can do that. And I think, you know, giving people a choice to that is it's very important. And also, you know, on top of that, um, the flip side is uh, when projects build on top of Wombat, when they know when the things unlock, you know, they can calculate the decay. It makes it so these projects can like you know forecast and do analysis much better and provide more robust kind of projects that go on top of Wombat. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really like that basketed model. Um, I think you're starting to slowly see other protocols realize that because I think the first thing that happened is when like the market took a, took a deep downturn. Anyone who was extremely bullish on the four year lockup was kind of immediately regretting this decision. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah. we've, we've still got quite a lot of that time horizon to play out. And they probably yeah. will be sitting pretty at the end of it, but that that, yeah. but having that choice, as you say, that's um, I think that's really really important, particularly for kind of new people that are coming into the space and just kind of figure this whole kind of dynamic out. I think that's yeah, yeah I think that's really yeah. important. Yeah, but just from like from my perspective, um, you can kind of already just see how the flywheel will come into motion near enough immediately as soon as another protocol builds on top, because everyone's going to have to scramble on whatever chain you guys are inevitably on. Because if they're not going to be boosting the yields and they're a yield aggregator or they're not going to be able to boost the yields because they haven't got enough of that kind of token in and of itself, they're like, it's whoever moves first is going to set themselves very pretty, I think, going forward. And there's kind of that kind of game theory and game dynamics that come into it. And you do see that an awful lot with Curve. And as I say, they they built like a, well, not them in, in personally, but they've, they've got this whole ecosystem built around it. Um, so it'll just be kind of fascinating to see how that plays out. And as you say, if there's already kind of interest, um, like nine nine projects or something coming to talk to you guys, I think uh, 
I think you guys will do really well off the back of that, if I'm if I'm completely honest. But is does this play into like I was I was checking the roadmap? Does this come into like the kind of the incubator, the one by incubator that you guys have, or is it kind of external yeah. projects that yeah, are yeah, yeah, to yeah. you guys? So like I thought of the entire mechanism. So one of the things about Wombat special is um you can't really arbit um, from a uh, from kind of like man- like adjusting the coverage ratio, which is I don't know if I kind of went into it, but I'll probably go into it later if if anyone's interested. So obviously there are ways to always game something. So Wombat solved our arbitrage kind of thing where if you flash loan attack it, basically we are mathematically protected from that. And I think, you know, that that's in the ethos of Wombat being really fair. So even with our, you know, our staking mechanism, there's actually, it's impossible to game it because we solved it with math too. So basically people will obviously try uh, because Wombat has so many slots to actually obviously stake. They'll probably try and figure out a mathematic optimal way. Well, you can't because <laughs> we mathematically solved the answer um so for that actually it makes a playing field a lot more fair so the thing you asked asked about like you know the wombat the kind of incubation that kind of thing so we're actually making that kind of fair too because of how our wom tokenomics is um so basically all these projects that build on top of wombat you have to, you have to commit three percent of the treasury into the wombat treasury this is basically for future wom stakers where you can actually decide what you want to do with these projects um, and you, you, you can imagine, I mean, if like, say curve owns like 3% of, of, of a convex, obviously there's a lot of things you can do with that. People can vote to, what to do. You can even vote to sell it if you want for, you know, increase like yields and that kind of stuff. But, you know, that's up for the people to decide. Um, but, you know, uh, I think it's important having an ecosystem, you know, people talk about like utility and uses and that kind of stuff. But I think Wombat, in my opinion, genuinely has, uh, you know, good uses besides just boosting because I think, you know, you know, right now the world is going towards real yields because, you know, everyone's tired of just dumping tokens, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, um, Wombat obviously because our unique proposition of doing multi-chain, we're actually much more efficient and that kind of stuff. So actually uh, by the end of the year, when we do multi-chain, we're actually going to turn on our fee sharing. Um, so with us going to so many chains at once and pulling into one gigantic pool, it's going to be much more capital efficient and that actually, in turn, is good for the end users because fee sharing is much better and more efficient for that way. So, yeah, that's that's basically the dynamics of Wombat and how we're pushing towards like real yields uh, rather than just like, you know, infamously just dumping tokens like every other like protocol. Right? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. I mean, we're seeing kind of protocols that have been around. Maybe it worked in when <laughs> when everything was going up and to the right, but that kind of token of design of um, propping up yields over the long term through emissions. Um, it, you know, I think they're feeling a pinch of it a little bit now. So everyone's scrambling to fix their tokenomics. Yeah. Um, we see, we're seeing that across the board, really. So with um, will gauge voting come into this? So like the way I'm kind of thinking about it is, well, it's, it's kind of twofold. Obviously, you can kind of do it with stable coins if there are any CDPs or, yeah. dare I say, algorithmic stable coins that are venture onto the platform. But would there yeah. be more kind of um, pegged assets fed on the future or even kind of your BNB USDC pool I don't know how, how would that play into it oh so Wombat's algorithm um, that's why we're not really a competitor to uh, PancakeSwap because uh, what how I see Wombat is literally the curve to uh, on Ethereum to you know uh, Uniswap and PancakeSwap is obviously what's on like uh, BNB chain so we actually will be the only pool in all of uh all of BNB chain and maybe even all of crypto that can actually do this because of our algorithm. So we have one gigantic pool for all the liquid staking. So it is like the first thing. So it is the most capital efficient. So we will have the best rates for all these liquid staking tokens like Stater, BNB, P-Stake, and ABNB, C by Anchor. So the beautiful thing about this is we not only we have like, you know, yields churning up from these protocols, we have efficient capital, capital efficient swapping, but in regards to your uh, gauge voting, kind of thing, yes, we will have that probably two months after. Um, I think a really powerful thing is that there's actually already, I think, like nine different stablecoin projects that I want to list into Wombat, into our gauge. But we're actually doing it a lot differently, too, because we actually have, um, so we, our team, invented a new algorithm. So one of the things that I really dislike about, you know, a lot of current stable swaps is like, you know, um, you know, they, they have obviously their design is inefficient. They have all these different types of like pools. 
um, people can create factories and, you know, try and bribe and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, people who put in stables is and retail users. And really right now, it's really not that protected. So, you know, with gauge voting, obviously there's potential that if people like vote for like a pool and something like UST goes to zero, you know, the only people that really get affected is the end users. I mean, you, right? Like, um, I mean, the UST, USDC pool back then when, like, when UST went to zero, basically USDC got drained and basically everyone that became an LP got screwed. Am I correct? I mean, that's, that's literally the thing. And yeah. And it's it's hurt a lot of people. I think, and honestly, man, like yeah, that really set the whole entire crypto ecosystem back like twenty, like ten, twenty years, because it, it gave people that kind of insecurity when they, you know, when they want to um, stake. But you know, the beating like literally in DeFi, being like having TVL providing liquidity is really the the, the foundation, right? So you're that guy really scared away literally everybody there. So. Our team invented what we call a side pool algorithm, and it's we call it DPEC protection. I needed, I think I need to change the name because it doesn't sound that cool. But basically, what it is, it's an oracle list um, uh, protection mechanism against people draining the pools. So I will implement this pool for almost all of the pools in on Wombat Exchange, meaning that if, say, like if a, pe- a, a token goes to zero, the mac- there's only X amount of it can, that can be drained. Um, for example, if there's like a, there's a pool with, for example, 11 tokens and out of that 11 tokens, one of them went to zero. So the maximum, um, it would, uh, each, each like basic pool or each token would be drained. It would be like 10% before that thing became like a, a hindrance. But so, um, it's not perfect, but I think, you know, being left with 90% is much better than being drained to zero. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope. Yeah, so hopefully that gives confidence to people, you know, putting being being a liquidity predator. And obviously, it's unique to Wombat, unique to BNB. Um, so hopefully it'll, you know, change how people use DeFi, man, I think. Yeah. Yeah, as, as, as well as kind of putting a lot of people off, it kind of drew a lot of unwanted attention and eyes on. So, yeah, anything that can kind of prevent that going forward is a, <laughs> is a positive. Um, we've got a few more minutes left before I just bring up anyone from the audience who wants questions. I know there's a couple of requests there. So just one final little point from me. Um, I know we're getting close to the launch. So how are people able to get involved if, if they want to participate in the IF, IFO on PancakeSwap? What's the kind of high level of view? I've left the thread that you guys released because um, a few people are asking for that. I've left that in the, should be below this actual Twitter spaces, but obviously we can get that retweeted out. Um, so yeah, can you just give us a high level of how people can get involved with that? Um, to get involved, uh, obviously you can get some cake, stake it, and I think you accrue eye cake, I believe. Um, I haven't really looked into all, all the minute details, um, but the other the other way, uh, that's for the public sale. The other private sale, I believe you can, you can buy the the Pancake Squad NFT and get like 100, I think $1,200 worth of allocation. And then yeah, just wait. Or worst case, tomorrow after IFO finishes, you can just buy straight up with um, uh, on PancakeSwap. So we are our team is personally seeding the initial liquidity. So there's going to be enough for people to buy. Um, yeah, hopefully everyone can get in at a good price. Um, I, I honestly I prefer like slow, steady uh, accumulation instead of just like mooning. Um, don't think that's healthy. But yeah, um, that's basically the gist of it. But I think most people would have the best chance, I guess, um, buying when you list after IFO. Nice. Okay, we've got uh, we've got a request from the audience here. I'll just bring up if anyone wants to ask any questions, make sure you're on a mobile device. Computers and laptops don't work. So we've got, let's see, Thai official coming up now. Two seconds. Okay, floor's yours. Yeah, Ty, you're good to go. Hello, guys. Good afternoon. How's it going, man? Yeah, I really like your project. So my question is, do you have any partnership, like maybe partnering with, like, the free wallet or something like that? Yeah, actually, um, I don't know if we're allowed to say it yet, but we're actually integrating uh, SafePal. Wait, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but okay, but we're integrating SafePal. 
and uh, we're actually integrating <laughs> a bunch of other different wallets. Um, but yeah, we're actually just going to announce like after IFO. Um, there's tons of uh, interest. I uh, really appreciate the, the, the you know, the uh, people being so supportive. But yeah, we have tons of uh, wallets. You can probably trade it in a multiple. Uh, we're already in, integrated in a bunch of uh, aggregators already, like uh, Kalmiswa, Open Ocean, uh, finishing up with One Inch. Um, but yeah, it, it's exciting. I think, you know, being, uh, you know, we had I think around fifteen to sixteen million TVL at uh, at the lowest point in the bear, and then but we were still out swapping everybody with the algorithm. I think that's cool. Um, you know, improved math works. You know, as you know, as a kid, I was forced to learn math. You always wondered why you studied math, and like, you know, this is it. So. Yeah, um, to answer your question, Tayo official. So we, yeah, uh, we are slowly being integrated, integrated into a, a bunch of different apps and apps. So yeah, stay tuned to our Twitter. Yeah, you'll, you'll just yeah, it'll we'll update you guys there. Yeah, I see. Just that. Um, so I want you to partner with um, Bitkeep OS. Do you know them? Um, no, I don't actually. Yeah, it's a Bitkeep. Is a defeat wallet based in Asia. Oh, no. Maybe I'll check it out later. Okay. Do, sir. We'll do, we'll so, do. thank Thank you for your question, man. Okay. Right. Uh, right. Ryan? Hello, guys. Good to go. Hey, how's it going? Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you for your question. Uh, we're waiting to hear. Oh, my question is about the last tweet I saw. Like you tweeted about uh, your own app. Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat it? Kind of cut out a bit. Is the tweet about your own app? Like people can also farm and stake there. Yep. 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 Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So obviously, Wombat is like similar to obviously all these DApps on uh, in DeFi, where you can have stables, you can stake it, and then you accrue WOM, and then the more WOM you get, you can actually boost your your holdings, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, the difference between us, like we are making as fair as possible, um, because like I mentioned before, I think DeFi is for everybody. So yeah, hopefully, yeah, support, and I think uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised at the user interface. Sure, sure. Because I've been a supportive member of your project since the first day I came across it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. I appreciate that. So how, how is that not, not going to be affecting the IFO going on? Yeah, it should, it, yeah it's, uh, everything's going very well. Um, but yeah, it's super busy. Super busy. Okay, no problem. I wish yeah. you started your project. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, hi. Uh, right, we got uh, Shant. Yep, go for it. Hey, hi, mate. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, man? Uh, thank you, man. So uh, I just want to um, see since the DeFi project, uh, are there any audits done from the reputable organizations like uh, any of the audits which are like uh, highly reputable organizations from? Oh, what security audits we've done? Yep. Yeah, I uh, went through a Zokio, which is a bunch of great, great, great bunch of great, really talented guys. Zokio, uh, Peck Shield, and Hacking have done our audits. Um, yeah, they, they've always they've all been very supportive and very uh, critical of what we've done. But you know, we've wrote pretty solid code so far, and then yeah, they've all all been very supportive and said that we've done very well in terms of their security audit practices. So, I mean, security is the it's it's paramount. Like I mentioned, it's not just um, not just like having code that can be hacked, but also you know the mathematical side where you know people can arb you, can like you know flash loan attack you, yeah. and and on top of that, it's like um, you know our multi sig is uh, with seven people. We're making sure there's no you know internal like funny business. So you know like 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 I mentioned, like Wombat is really made for the general public for everybody here. We don't want anybody to you know lose money. So we do everything we can to make sure security is our top priority. So yeah, th thanks, thanks for that question. Yeah, and uh, I'm adding to that, I'm just going to add a couple of questions I do have. So uh, <laughs> are we planning for any sex listing? Uh, actually, we got approved. Um, 
we got approached and approved by multiple uh, centralized exchanges. But at this time, um, I prefer Wombat to keep our, you know, DeFi kind of ethos. So we just chose PancakeSwap initially. Um, not only are you know, they're a bunch of great guys, but I think, you know, it's important to show our dedication to DeFi. And I mean, I'm, I'm a DeFi nut. I love it. Um, so I think centralized exchange will come, but I think it's not my priority right now. My priority is having governance out, the side pools to protect people's assets, and finally, um, going multi-chain, so let people freely do what they want with their money or tokens. Yeah, uh, one last final question, because I'm <laughs> into this price market, you know, uh, from the last uh, bull market to this bear market, I have seen the tokens. Uh, where they release with you know, less number of uh, tokens, like uh, if the supply is one billion, they release around a hundred million. And uh, uh, for the unfortunate time, if where hits, the supply will increase, the circulation will increase. Obviously, yeah. the market is in bear state; the people won't show any interest. The supply will increase, and uh, no demand for the token. Ultimately, the price will go to down of like you know 10x, 12x, 20x sometimes, which will lead to investor loss. So, uh, considering that scenario, I know that the DeFi is always good, and the staking also kind of maintaining you do a kind of the thing. Yeah, uh, did you guys consider these things? Because we never know when this the winter will end um well there's a few things i think that's a that's a fantastic question um yeah as you know one of the you know the one of the best protocols out there like a bunch of them actually were all built in the bear market right so you know curve uh, uniswap yeah. uh, avalanche they were all built in literally uh the bear market um would you say that they launched in a bear market it is a bad thing um i don't think so i think bear markets for builders it's like the perfect opportunity to build and that kind of stuff so and i did um, not say that um, i mean no no yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what, i mean what, the what vesting I mean? side so if you take the icp wonderful project but they like crashed oh i've, I've internet products someone... In, internet oh, I, computer i know, I know. I've, I've never heard someone say that was a good project before. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. a, it has huge yeah, community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I'm not really that familiar with uh, with them. But yeah, um, for our tokenomics, uh, we're very we don't we don't we're doing you know very reasonable kind of emissions um, because okay. as it's a bear market, I believe it's you know it's best that we slowly emit rather than um, having attracting. Because Wombat's, Wombat's ethos is really long-term and it's for stability. So we're not going to go crazy dumping tokens. Um, we have a lot bunch, bunch of great investors um, like Animoca, Jump, Ashima, Hailstone. They all uh, agreed to like lower their initial uh, TG unlock. That's just a sign that they're you know very supportive of long-term. Binance is obviously locked in for long-term. So you know we're here for like a long-term kind of game. So uh, you're right. Thank you know you have done. Dump, dumping tokens is a horrible thing. It pushes down the price, but that's not what we're trying to achieve here at Wombat. So we are, you know, effectively going to, um, you know, watch the emissions, but keep building, making something uh, strong and stable. Because let's be honest, man. Like, um, if you look at the bear market, uh, all solid quality DeFi protocols. It's business as usual. Aave, Curve, Uniswap, all these guys. Yearn, you know, it's they nothing. Nothing happened to them, right? So. That's Wombat's goal, and that's what we're going to pursue, and hopefully make you know all everyone that supports Wombat happy. Perfect, sounds great. Thank you for the answers, and thank yeah, you. thank you for the question, man. Yeah, I might be able to just say stuff that you can't because you're a project founder, but um, to be launching in this time is um, is one hundred percent the best time to do it. You don't want to be kind of catching the coattails of just by bull market hype. Um, because as you say, you prefer that like slow, steady growth over time as opposed to like hockey stick, particularly when there's, you know, when there's not a lot of opportunity in the market or people keep getting wrecked and things like that, left, right and center, people start looking for and reverting back to fundamentals. So um, I don't know how much of that you can actually say, well, I'm not say because I'm just a DJ new <laughs> to his magical <laughs> little new coins. <laughs> um, have you got time for one more? There's, we've got, uh, got some last one or do you need to shoot? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go for it. Great avatar, by the way. Pack one. Uh, go for it. Oh, hey. Uh, sorry about that. I just had it on mute. 
Uh, hi, Alex. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about Wombat launch tomorrow. Um, I'll be on a flight just as it's about to launch, so hopefully I can get off that flight and uh, get some tokens in the IFO. <laughs> Thanks for your support. Yeah, you. so what what you were talking about Wormhole earlier, and it's another project that I'm looking at. Could you tell me a bit more about the uh, ideas that you've got with them? Uh, well, I can't share too much, but basically I think it's in line with like a one like ethos. Um, so one of the things that I, I really disagree with in the whole like, kind of crypto is like capital inefficiency. Like, you know, you have curves with like different pools. Like actually any any decks right now, they have like multiple pools, right? So they have like a, like a USDT, USDC pool, and then obviously the three CRV kind of pools. And it's so capital inefficient in terms of like, um, because we know that, you know, the larger like kind of like the pool that with the higher TVL, the better slippage rates you get, right? So with that said, it's the same, the same kind of mentality applies to kind of a multi-chain world. Uh, if you have separate, de separate deployments, uh, you actually run into more capital inefficiency issues because you have, you know, your, your USD pool in obviously Avalanche, you another USDT pool in uh, Binance, another USD pool in Solana. Basically, you're, you're still segregating liquidity. So the beauty with wormhole and obviously layer zero, um, you can there's ways to uh, pull all this liquidity together and make, make it really capital even more capital efficient. Um, so that that's that's what that's kind of a hint of what wombat's going to do. Um, I think it's really powerful because you know um, as we go into a world where uh, we like I believe people should have a choice, like you know like like how, you know entire one of my ethos is where you have a choice to uh, stake however long you want uh you make decisions on behalf of the protocol because i think that is a DeFi kind of like um the essence of DeFi. and with that said like i also don't believe in you know a single chain um i chose bnb as our base because obviously i think there's a lot of things going for it as in stability and that kind of stuff but i don't really don't think anyone should be stopped from you know going to solana or you know any layer twos to you know trade and buy things but we need to solve this capital efficiency problem. And that's what we're using Wormhole to do, basically having one gigantic pool, just like what we do at Wombat, but, you know, on a multi-chain level. Um, so hopefully that's kind of like a big hint. I think I kind of gave it away, but that's what we're going to do. And I think hopefully we can break down these walls and give people a choice. And I think freedom of choice is always the most valuable thing in life. And that's hopefully what Wombat can bring to this kind of multi-chain kind of crazy world. Great answer. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, any anything final for, from you, Alex? I don't want to keep too much of your time. I know that you're really uh, pushed with the launch and everything tomorrow. Um, any final final remarks? I'll just dip, drop one thing in there. I think as soon as I put this down, we've got uh, an article surrounding Wombat. Just really deep dive. Any of these questions that people have, have came up and asked for, thank you for that. Um, a lot of the answers that will be in there, so we do need to refer back in like a really easy to understand kind of guide. We, we will post that out, out after this. We're going to be covering them more in detail as well. There's more like tutorial, how to go in, how to de de uh, deposit stables, how to deposit your um, warm and everything like that as well. So we'll make sure we get it all covered. Everyone knows what they're doing. And yeah, if you guys need anything from us going forward, just, just say the word and consider it done. We love supporting projects that are doing really, really cool shit. So as I said, just say the word and we'll, we'll get it done. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, but yeah, final words. Thanks uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, Blockmates. You guys are awesome. Um, thanks, everyone here listening. And thanks for supporting Wombat. Um, like, you know, our ethos, like, DeFi is for everyone. Hopefully, it can do something and help improve the lives of everyone here. So, yeah. Thanks for your time. Have a good night, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, take care. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks, everyone. Speak soon.